Hi everyone, I'm Jermaine and this is the Motorola Edge 40 Pro. Let's find out through Jermaine's lens, through the lens, behind the lens, I'm thinking of a new channel name. But anyway, let's find out how the Motorola Edge 40 Pro does when it comes to photography. And it's daytime photography only for this video. So as always, let's begin with the specifications. It comes with a 50 megapixel main sensor, which is of course the wide lens, a 1.8 f-stop and a 1 over 155 inch sensor size. We have a 12 megapixel telephoto with a 1.6 aperture and a 1 over 293 inch sensor size. Then we have the ultra wide. Now the ultra wide is a 50 megapixel sensor with a 2.2 f-stop and a 114 degrees field of view and a 1 over 276 inch sensor size. Video recording is max 8K and 30 frames per second, but you can of course also record 4K, 60 frames, 30 frames and 1080p up to 960 frames. And it supports 10-bit and HDR10+. And of course what cannot be ignored is the display itself. It is really important to have a proper display during photography, especially if you want to play with different angles. And here I think that the Motorola Edge 40 Pro does really well. When it comes to that display, it's excellent. So let's talk about my camera experience with of course the Motorola Edge 40 Pro. Overall I will say what I really noticed during filming and testing the phone out is that it's quite capable. It's really fast in terms of shutter speed as well in normal situations, allowing me to easily capture whatever I want, including people in movement and of course in the train as well, actually being able to capture things around me. It did that really well and I had no issue whatsoever. And when it comes to the result of the camera, I think overall it does really well. Yes, there are some parts where I think saturation is a bit too high, sharpening and everything, but we'll get into that a little bit later. But overall, I think when it comes to the camera performance, it actually is quite capable. It's not gonna be the top dog, you're not paying for that price. But overall, I think if you want to quickly capture a shot, it is quite good, but just not the best. Now when it comes to the camera app itself, it is quite intuitive. Of course you have your normal sensor that it starts with, you're right. You can zoom in, you can go to the ultra wide, and of course use macro mode as well. Below you will find your photo, your portrait, your pro, and of course slow motion and many more options, including for instance night vision. In the photo mode you can also play around with the ratio of the shots itself. You can have it 3x4, you can have it 9x16, you can have it really large as well, and a 1x1. You can put your HDR on and off really easily and overall the settings are quite intuitive. When it comes to video recording, as stated, in video mode you can have for instance your steady mode on and off. But of course do know that in steady mode you are limited in terms of video recording capabilities when it comes to resolution. You also have your night vision for video recording as well. To change the video resolution it is quite intuitive as well. Drop it down and you see the different resolutions and of course aspect ratio as well. When it comes to recording, you can set it to HDR10+, but do know that 4K and 30 frames per second is the max then. Either way, let's look at some shots that I've taken on the Motorola Edge 40 Pro.
Now, often when it comes to these kind of videos, I don't try to say too much about my opinion because simply put, I want to hear your opinion. I don't want my opinion to influence yours. But with that being said, I still have one and this is at the end a review. And I want to state what I think about the Motorola Edge 40 Pro and in some cases what I feel like they need to work on. Let's start with sharpening. Now of course when it comes to sharpening you can see that well when it comes to buildings it does have quite a lot of sharpening going on especially if it has bricks or more complicated things like churches that have of course that gothic look with a lot of things next to it having that extra sharpening going on top of it sometimes actually means that it kind of loses detail it's too much not to mention that it can actually create a situation where you have grain during daytime Simply put, sharpening needs work when it comes to the Motorola Edge 40 Pro. And there's one last thing, and that is saturation and brightness. Now, it's mostly the saturation that I have an opinion about. The brightness sometimes is a little bit too much as well, where the contrast also is not that great because it hasn't much of it. But when it comes to shots, especially during a bright sunny day, it can have too much saturation, even more so if green is involved. So those are my main two gripes when it comes to the Motorola Edge 40 Pro. The sharpening and the saturation slash brightness, but more the saturation. It's not bad by any means, and especially during nature photography when it comes to sharpening, it actually doesn't hurt it at all. But when it comes to buildings, and of course structures like churches that have a lot of detail in them, I would say that sharpening especially is my main gripe when it comes to the Motorola Edge 40 Pro. But with that being said, when it comes to mobile photography, the one thing that I really like is the possibility to quickly play around with different styles. And the Motorola Edge 40 Pro doesn't disappoint, especially because it has black and white. So here, some shots taken on the Motorola Edge 40 Pro using different styles. Okay, 35 seconds recording. Of course, the model has to be cool. Yeah, of course, zoom in, but. Alright, 4K, 60 frames per second, stability mode on. Because with 8K you cannot have stability mode on. Of 
course that makes a big difference in terms of how stable the footage is. Now the sun is behind this building. It's a very strong sun, of course, getting lower. Uh, you cannot zoom out to the ultra wide. This can only be done in 1080p and 30 frames per second. Ultra wide, 4K, 60 frames per second. Pretty much the same rule. You can see the sun is right there. Stability seems fine on the phone. <clears throat> 4K 30 frames per second in ultra wide. That is really hard to capture. And 4K 30 frames per second with the main lens. See, it's right there. Seems a little bit of a delay when I move, like slightly, but it's okay. Like I said, this is 1080p and 30 frames per second, but now I can move to the ultra wide freely between those two lenses. Of course, zooming in can be done with all of them, but I assume that it won't use the zoom lens when you are actually recording 4K 60 frames, 4K 30 frames, and 1080p. 60 frames. Hello. So, at the end, how does the Motorola Edge 40 Pro perform? I will say, there are some comments that I have where I feel like Motorola can still learn from it. But we have to keep in mind that you're not paying top dollar compared to, for instance, a Vivo, compared to a Xiaomi, compared to Samsung. Which, by the way, I have a whole different topic about when it comes to their photography. And then, of course, things like Apple. You're paying quite a bit less and you have to keep that in mind. When you compare a phone like this in your head compared to a different phone. There's just different things that you need to keep in mind. So, let me start by saying that sharpening is one of those. Probably on the top of my list when it comes to what they need to change when it comes to photography. You can especially see this during building photography. Building photography of course has a lot of details in it and if that sharpens up it stands out a lot more. When it comes to nature photography the sharpening doesn't stand out at all or far less compared to having your building shot where there are bricks and everything in terms of details that it needs to capture and then sharpening. Having that kind of sharpening also makes it that you get a bit more noise in the shot itself. The image just looks a little bit off. So there I really feel like Motorola needs to work on. Then we have a second part, it's saturation. Saturation can be quite a bit higher than I would like it to be, especially greens. And don't worry, this is something that a lot of phones struggle with. For some reason, a lot of phone brands have this saturation going on with greens that is just not that nice. So I will say that greens definitely still need work here and just the general saturation can be toned down a little bit, but when it comes to those greens, that's definitely too high for my liking. Then of course we have to talk about the brightness of the shot. Overall, I think the brightness is not too much. It's just that tiny bit, but not too much for me. And then when it comes to the ultra wide, this kind of fits the same program, right? You get the same kind of feeling that it needs the same amount of work when it comes to what you want out of the shot itself. And I think ultra wide in general is a little bit weaker when it comes to Motorola devices. When it comes to things that I really like about it, however, it's the possibility to play around with the camera. I find this really important. This is a fun part about the experience of photography. Having the possibility to play around with the shots is something that I really enjoy. This is why I returned to Google Pixel 7a. It's just simply not for me. I cannot play around with the device and therefore I will send it back because simply put, it's 509 euros and if I'm not going to use that device, it's a real waste for me and I really wanted to experience it and therefore I gave it a chance. But if I don't have that possibility to play around with it, I generally don't care that much about the device. So when it comes to the Motorola Edge 40 Pro, I do have the possibility. Not to mention the black and white is actually quite nice. You have of course your black and white classic where it's a little bit more brighter and it doesn't have a lot of contrast to it. You have your black and white vivid, which the name itself doesn't make a lot of sense because it there's no color in it and I feel like it's somewhat related to of course colors but when it comes to that one you get a bit more contrast and the shot looks a bit more dramatic and that is something that I truly enjoy about black and white. Black and white photography is something that I enjoy. Having the possibility to play around with those and of course different filters or effects is something that I truly enjoy when it comes to the Motorola. 
Not to mention that you also have a leveler on there. Some devices don't have that and that's something that I enjoy as well. But what I really want to have as well is at the moment that I am level, I want a kind of like a vibration on the motor itself so I know even if I cannot properly see the screen itself that I'm level. Either way, when it comes to the Motorola Edge 40 Pro, I will say overall the camera performance is fine. It's not going to blow you away because you're not paying that amount of money for it. But overall, I think it's fine. It's just not as good as for instance the Xiaomi 13 Pro or the Vivo X90 Pro. I prefer those over the Motorola Edge 40 Pro, but again, I'm not paying the same amount of money for it. So it makes a lot of sense. And it is helped by being really fast in the shots itself. I definitely noticed that. If I'm capturing a shot of a moving subject, a person for instance, it does capture that really fast. So that definitely helps when it comes to the Motorola Edge 40 Pro. It just needs a little bit more work on how they process the shot itself. Either way, let me know in the comments below what you think about the camera result because at the end, this is my preference. My preference doesn't necessarily has to be yours. You can be in a very different opinion where you want that sharpening, where you want that saturation, where you want the brighter shot. So therefore it's hard for me to say what you need to like and all that stuff. So let me know in the comments below what you think about the camera result, what you think about the Motorola Edge 40 Pro because I'm curious and it is always fun to have a debate about it. Either way, hope you enjoyed this video and of course if you did don't forget to like, subscribe and everything. I'm trying to hit 10k before the end of the year. We'll find out if that works out but either way, hope you enjoyed and of course talk to you guys in the next.